Hey guys, welcome back to Royalty Soaps. My name is Katie Carson. I'm the Duchess of Suds over here on this YouTube channel. And let me tell you, today's gonna be a wild ride. Basically, I wanted to test out a lot of different things. I wanted to test out some colorants. I wanted to test out a new piece of equipment. I wanted to try an old frosting tip that I hadn't used in a while, new colors, new fragrances. I just wanted to test a lot of things. So I ended up making two different small batches of soap and I had wildly different results. Sister over here. <laughs> is known for making some super duper extra bars of soap, but I have to say, one of today's contestants ended up being a real disappointment. At least one of these bars will be available with the Fernwood Fall Collection that launches on the first Saturday of November at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time at RoyaltySoaps.com. Don't forget to set a release alarm for this one, you guys, because these soaps are gonna go pretty fast if history repeats itself. They will be listed as limited edition bars and um, those always sell out within like the first five minutes. So you really have to be there on time if you want to get one. And without further ado, enjoy the video. The first thing we are doing today is measuring out some colors. So because I'm testing colors, I thought you guys might enjoy seeing me lay them out. This first one is from Fizz Fairy. It's one of their crazy colors, Blue Mauve Mica. So kind of a blue toned purple. It's very pretty. Next up is Midnight Blue Mica. Look at that. Ugh, what a rich pigmentation. Next up is Blue Suede Shoe. Mica. Oh, look at that. It is a true royal blue. And then finally, we're going to test one of their purple micas. This is called Purple Rain. For the fragrance, I'll be using Violet Moon Dance. This is from Brambleberry. It is part of their Mooncraft collection that has just launched recently. It is all very beautiful and it smells absolutely divine. Every single one of those fragrances is really good. They really nailed it. So, I'm just going to pour a teeny tiny bit of my base oils into my containers here just to mix up all those micas, make sure they're not very powdery. And I like to mix up my colorants first by like smushing up all of the actual powder and then blending all the little bits. I just find that it generally works better that way and you have less fluffing all around. Awesome, okay, so I have everybody all mixed up. So now we can go ahead and blend our lye water solution into our oils. I'm gonna bring you guys in real close today. I thought it might be fun to sort of shake it up a little. Glub, 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 glub. Blend it on low until just past emulsion. I want this really runny. That was literally a 10 second blend for this soap. That's how little it needs whenever you're working in small batches. Okay, so let's go ahead and test out our colors first. We're gonna start with that purple rain mica. I'm gonna put that into the container that has the most. Then we're gonna go in with our purples and our blues. Now, let's start by mixing everything in with my popsicle stick. Now, I am just blown away by these blues. They're really, really something else. Is it gonna go black? Oh, is this one gonna be one of the ones that has that like ferric oxide in it? I can't remember how to say that word, but there is a certain ingredient sometimes in mica blends that turns cold process soap gray. And I think that one had it in it. <laughs> But that uh, that other blue one there down at the end didn't. And this one, I think, might have it as well. See how it's going a really, a really kind of moody looking gray? I will go check the ingredients in those, but I'm pretty sure that's what they have in them. It's actually not a big deal though for um, the soap. And because we're just testing everything today, then, well, you know, who cares? <laughs> Wow, that purple is really pretty. This is actually a really lovely, like, muted color palette. Now I'm gonna pour in approximately 
the same amount of purple that they have here. And then the rest of this, I'm gonna leave for the top of the soap. Now I'm going to blend this in with my popsicle stick. These are little bitty containers and the fragrance notes did say that they might speed up trace a little bit. So I'm going to work with something that I know I can control. It won't blend too much, but I can still get that fragrant soil fully incorporated. Yeah, too bad about this midnight blue here. That would have been a really, really cool color in soap. However, I feel like you could probably get something similar with an ultramarine and a black oxide mix. That's typically what I do for navies. These would also be really good colors for melt and pour soap because high pH wouldn't be a factor. That soap is already soap. <laughs> it's just meltable at this point. Alrighty, so everything is blended in. Nothing is moving too fast. I'm going to separate these two colors here and then we're going to use this handy dandy tool I got off of Etsy. I actually think that this is used for acrylic pores like acrylic paint pores but I'm going to use it for soap today. This is going to keep all of my soap separate. It's a 3D printed like pouring thing which is super cool and I just thought it'd be super fun to try out so that's what we're gonna do it's so nice I'm not having to like move around dividers or anything like that I do think it's gonna be a little annoying to clean but you know we're willing to we're willing to uh, make sacrifices for amazing things <laughs> all right I have most of my stuff in there. So let's take our purple mold. All right, I have propped it up on the side and then I'm just going to pour out of the container onto the edge of my mold here and everything should be coming out at roughly the same speed. I do think there are a couple colors that are a little bit thicker than others, but I'm not too worried about that. It seems like they're both coming out pretty good and I'm just using the side of the mold to break the fall. Now I don't know who came up with this soap technique, but it was something I'm pretty sure um, they did in the Great Cakes Soap Works Soap Challenge Club. If I'm right about that, I'm pretty sure I am. Then I'm gonna stop. I still have some soap left in there, but I also have some soap left in my container, so I'm gonna refill. All right. Gonna keep on filling here. Oh yeah, <laughs> this looks so cool. <laughs> cool. All right, and now for the top, I'm just gonna go ahead and pour that little bit of lavender that I had left. Okay, awesome. I'm going to let this set up off to the side and we're gonna mix up some soap frosting. Okay, so because I was so thrilled with the blue suede shoes, we're gonna use that to color this frosting. Pour this in, glove, 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 and blend it on up. So frosting all set up and today I'm using the Wilton 1M piping tip. Now I get asked a lot to demonstrate using this tip but it's not something in my usual repertoire so I don't use it very often <laughs> but here you go for those of y'all who wanted to see somebody pipe with this tip it's a lot easier to use on soap cupcakes and it's a lot easier to use on smaller soap batches because it lets less soap out. It also doesn't have as clean a cut as the other piping tips I typically use, and that's why I use the other ones. But as far as like a ruffling texture, it looks super pretty. I actually think I'm gonna go ahead and fill in <laughs> these edges a little bit just so that the sample pieces have a little bit of frosting, but also so that the rest of the soap <laughs> is filled in completely. First thing to add to the frosting is some mica drizzle. Oh yeah, woohoo! All the micas that I put on the inside of the soap, I'm also going to put on the top of the soap. Just adds a little bit of, you know, extra dimension, extra loveliness. One piece of sodalite. Sodalite is so 
pretty. It looks like lapis lazuli. Is that how you say it? Lapis lazuli. Uh, however you say it. It looks like that, but it's not that. It's a cheaper form of that. This looks like blue lightning in a rock. Now we're going to add some of these stones that I have dusted in some gold kind of shimmery green mica. It's really, really pretty. I wanted it to kind of look like little moon rocks or something. This mica is actually from TKB. Sometimes I get some of their more shimmery micas to try out for melt and pour and stuff. I wanted to see how this one would look on salts in a soap. This is kind of what it looks like on my fingers. Then we're gonna take some Mad Micah's glitter. I do not remember the name of this off the top of my head, but I don't think I've really used it in any soap. So I wanted to give it a try on this one because the purples match perfectly. It's kind of a blue purple. Ugh, that looks really good. Really highlights that mica. Next, we're gonna add a little bit of hollow glitter. You know I gotta bring those rainbows in. Um, I? absolutely love this is everything i'm gonna spritz this very gently very very gently with rubbing alcohol and then that's it i'm gonna let this sit for 18 to 24 hours and it's time to move on to our next experiment soup okay so for this next one i know i want to have some sort of a pastel rainbow something <laughs> I don't know exactly what. It's just something pastel and rainbow. So I'm gonna go get some more black oxide, mix that up, and we'll see what I end up doing. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and pour our lye water solution into our oils. Let's go ahead and pour some of our soap into each one of these, right about the same amount for every single one of them. And then I'm going to very carefully measure some titanium dioxide into each cup. Now I'm gonna do this with a pipette so that I can make sure everybody is getting the same amount of milliliters as the other. Everyone is getting one and a half milliliters, except for the yellow, because as we all know, Okay, so we're gonna start by pouring some soap right this way on an incline. Okay, so while this sets up, and yes, that was very difficult to both pour and film and keep in frame, I'm gonna set it off to the side, just allow it to do its thing, and then we're gonna start mixing these up in the order I want them to go in. So we'll probably just go in in rainbow order here, something a little bit like that. Then I'm going to add my fragrance oil, which is this Bewitched Orchid. This is from Brambleberry. Added the fragrance, and now I'll blend everything together. Let me move you into my messy table. <laughs> I'm just going to try to pour this purple right here across the soap. Okay, good. And I do have enough to cover everything. But the thing is, is that I want to move on to the next color before this one hardens. So I want the next color to kind of push this purple color out of the way. I think that'll make a really cool effect in the soap. So that's what I'm going to do. It's going to take me a while. I'm going to have to blend up, you know, like every single layer. So bear with me and enjoy the music. <laughs> Because I'm trying to make this whole thing look kind of drippy, I'm going to remove a couple of these popsicle sticks in the hope, oh, there we go, yeah, that it would move down just a little bit. <laughs> now, I'm going to let this set up completely before I add the next bit of black because I really want all of these little wiggly layers to stay put. I don't want them moving once I add the black. So I'm gonna let this sit up for about five minutes before we pour the rest of it on. Okay, hope this goes according to plan. Just gonna start by filling up the most delicate part. Let it just sort of drape over that soap. 
And then once I have the majority of my black in, I'll go ahead and take the popsicle sticks out. Okay, let's go ahead and let that set up while I figure out what I'm gonna do for this frosting. Alrighty, so I decided to use a round tip for my soap frosting on this particular soap. And I am doing some kind of smaller piping because I mixed up some pastel rainbow colors that I'm going to drizzle on top of the piping. And there's quite a lot of them so I don't want to uh, put too much on here and then not have enough left over so I'm gonna be very sparing and then to make sure I actually get this like right down the middle I'm gonna turn it on the side okay one two three four five six seven eight nine wait what have I been a goose this whole time yes these molds are marked for me to make 10. They're not marked like the brambleberry molds. Oh well! <laughs> Guess there's only going to be nine bars of each. So let's start by pouring on our purple drizzle. Now this is going to be very, very mounded up by the time that I'm done. You're probably not even gonna be able to see the white frosting and it's going to look very drippy. Bright blue is next. I'm gonna try to pour this in a slightly different way than I poured the purple. I'm also going to let this sit here a little bit. I'm gonna wait between me adding on the frosting because I know that if I just pour it one after the other, it will slip and we definitely don't want that. Wow. Um, <laughs> this is extra special. <laughs> so let's add some hollow glitter as only seems <laughs> fitting and proper for this. And for the final touch, I have these cute little hearts. I'm gonna take them out of my little baggie here so I can show you. These cute little hearts that were sent in to me from a subscriber. So they're little lava stone hearts. And I am going to wipe down this side real quick, just so I can see where everybody needs to be placed. And I think after all that piling of everything up, <laughs> I can actually end up getting 10 bars out of this. So that's what I'm gonna try to do. No! Oh no! Oh, it was much more runny than I thought. No! What about on top? Okay, it's fine on top. <gasps> no! Okay, no more. No more. <laughs> that is so sad. Okay. <laughs> After it sets up, I will come back tomorrow and clean everything up so that, you know, it looks nice and there's not extra soap on places there shouldn't be. But there you go. There's Whatever even this is, I don't know. I just wanted to try something new. Some sort of rainbow pastel cereal milk. I have no idea. We'll see how it looks in the morning. I'll be back in 18 to 24 hours and we will cut up these two experimental soap batches. You guys are not ready for this. Okay, so first of all, 24 hours later, looking a lot better, okay? <laughs> like everything looks very pastel, which is what I wanted. I will clean up this little soapy bit right here so that these look really nice. <gasps> looks so good. But listen, listen, the first soap <laughs> is laughable that beautiful blue she's brown now <laughs> you want to talk about some paranormal color morphing this is so ugly <laughs> i mean like the glitter and stuff still looks really nice on top as does like all the pretty stuff but the actual frosting hot garbage <laughs> looks so bad. So now I know not soap safe. And I know if I had just taken two seconds to go look at the website, it probably would have told me that like, oi, not cold process soap safe, not stable. But I just wanted to try it. And I'm pretty sure the entire loaf is like 
hideous. I don't think it's just the top. Y'all, look at this. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Gosh. Oh, it's so ugly. A moment of silence for what was once a beautiful loaf of soap and what now just looks like just wretched. Honestly, I'm still excited to see how that pour looked because regardless of the colors, the pour could still be pretty cool, but those colors are atrocious. <laughs> The smell though, the smell, delightful. The smell is amazing. Like 10 out of 10 Brambleberry. Okay, let's unmold this one because I'm really, really excited about seeing those pastels on the inside. And unmolding quite cleanly. <gasps> oh, oh my gosh. It's going to be so cool. That looks so cool. Look at, look at it on this side. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to cut it. Okay, first I'm cutting the ugly little monster soap. <laughs> like, there's just no excuse for how ugly this is. It's so bad. Here goes absolutely nothing. <laughs> okay, let's see the design on the inside. Holy smokes, look at the design. <gasps> The design itself looks so stinking cool. The colors, like, hideous. We can make absolutely no excuse for it, but the design itself is wicked sweet. Who votes we do this design again with colors that actually work? <laughs> So that pouring bucket definitely worked. It does need to be rinsed out like immediately, um, but it it works, it works. And it makes a really, really cool design, especially if you pour it on the side. So, I mean, 10 out of 10 for that. And I got that little bucket off of Etsy. So I can just link that down below. Just so you know, I am a member of Reward Style. A lot of my links are Reward Style links if they're from Etsy, but obviously I'm buying them regardless. It's just nice if you get a little commission for things you're already shopping for. It doesn't cost you anything extra to use those links. Wow. Each one, I'm just like continually impressed with that pour. It's so cool. This might legitimately be like my most ugly color combo ever. Albeit unintentional, it's still just absolutely hideous. Okay, let's cut something that will not yield <laughs> such disappointing results. Okay, I cut the end piece off, but I didn't look at the inside because that's not what I want to see is <laughs> the end piece. I want to see like an actual bar. Okay, <gasps> let's take a look at the inside. I'm so excited. I hope this looks the way I wanted it to. <gasps> oh my gosh, I love this so much more than even I thought I was going to. <laughs> the yellow's a little bold, obviously. I need to change it to a neon. The, it looks like rainbows sitting on top of a cloud and the little, I mean, what's, oh my gosh. I'm shook it. I love it so much. These soaps are almost good enough to make up for the other ones. <laughs> it's like really beautiful bar, really ugly bar. <laughs> there was no in between. This is like Rainbow Road on the new version of Mario Kart, the one that you like play on the Switch. They have like a dark version of Rainbow Road. That's what this reminds me of. I am absolutely delighted. And it is like glooping over the other ones. That's exactly what I wanted. I, I, I'm so pleased. Ah! <laughs> it's just the contrast is so Arc. It makes me laugh. I can't help but laugh. This one even has glycerin rivers on the top. Like, you can't make this up. It's so ugly. Let me just say, if this is a bar you truly love, and I understand beauty is in the eye of the beholder, so what I think is atrocious, you might actually love. And in that case, just let me know down in the comments below. Uh, otherwise, I'm just gonna donate this bar. Um, if you really 
want it, let me know and we'll make a listing. But I just cannot imagine in any world that anyone would want that. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please go to big thumbs up. That really helps me know what kind of content you're interested in. If you like seeing a failed batch, if you like seeing me experiment with stuff and make some, you know, pastel soaps, just let me know what you like about it. Give the video a thumbs up if this is something you want to see more of. Have an absolutely royal day. Be sure you do something fun for yourself today, like going out and buying some My Little Pony lip balm. <laughs> Or perhaps digging up pictures of yourself from junior high to remind yourself of how far you've come. I don't really care what you do, just be sure you do something fun for I cannot stop laughing. I've tried. <laughs> just be sure you do something fun for yourself. I will see you guys in the next video. Have an absolutely royal day. Bye for now. Meow. <laughs>